In this video, we're gonna be talking about why Bitcoin is hitting all time highs. The six things that I'm seeing out there that are contributing to it going to all time highs and how you can take advantage of it. Stay tuned. Everybody, Mark Yegi here, wealth architect and um, a Bitcoin connoisseur and Bitcoin lover. And I can tell you right now, the reason I'm loving Bitcoin is because it's making me a lot of money. And um, and I think it's really early in the game. Bitcoin is about to hit brand new all time highs. It's really exciting time. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on in the market, but you probably know all about all that. Let me just tell you the six macroeconomic trends that are happening that are going to cause Bitcoin to shoot way higher. And if you're not involved in this market, you need to be. So the first one is inflation. So right now, what's happening is you're seeing inflation all through the economy. And I'll tell you about that in just a second about why that is. But right now, don't you see that there's tons of inflation? And look at your gas prices. They're up about 60% from just a year ago. Uh, look at your food prices. Food prices are up 30%, 20% sometimes even 50%, depending on if you're buying meat or vegetables or whatever. I'll tell you why that's happening in a second too. So you're seeing a rush to a store of value. Stores of value are things like assets. So you're seeing bubbles in all kinds of assets, real estate, stock market. Tons of assets are bubbling up right now because people need to put their money somewhere. They know that if they put it in cash, it's depreciating, it's declining in value. You can buy fewer things next year than you can this year. So you might as well put it in some asset that's going to at least track inflation somewhat. Okay, so that's inflation. I'm going to circle back around to inflation because that's a key macroeconomic driver. The next one is a distrust of government and centralized planning. So we've got people that are, you know, these old white people, not that there's anything wrong with old people or white people, but that's who's up there. Uh, people like Janet Yellen and Joe Biden. And th these are these are centralized planners making our decision about our lives. Right. And what they're doing is they're printing all kinds of money and they're saying, well, we need infrastructure and we need to give money for this. And they're paying all kinds of money out. Well, that's inflationary because economies track productivity. When economy is being very productive, it grows. When economy is not being productive, it doesn't grow. We'll talk about that in a second as well. And so people have a distrust of some somebody up in Washington or somebody in the ECB in Brussels or whatever making decisions about their financial life. And the decisions they're making are not very good, as you see in the inflationary data. And so we're moving to a power to the central government, to a few people that are sitting up in power that we apparently elected or they got appointed, to centralized, to decentralized power, power to the people. And so that's a big, big deal. Now, there is a lack of supply of Bitcoin. Now, that's really the key macro macroeconomic thing when it comes to Bitcoin. And that's really more of a microeconomic factor. But there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin minted, right? After that, that's it. It's all going to be supply and demand. And when there's a huge demand and a lack of supply, the price shoots up. And so right now, you're seeing way less than 21 million uh, Bitcoin minted. And the price is shooting up. It's just that's why it's at all-time highs right now. There's another thing that we need to address, and that is that people are uh, incentivized to sit at home. And even though the, the enhanced economic benefits of being unemployed are, have gone down, there's still lots of unemployment. There's lots of people that are looking for jobs, and they just can't find people to get off their butts and go into to work. They just would rather sit at home, play games, watch Netflix, whatever they do at home. I don't know. I'm not going to pass judgment. But they're not working. And again, economies track productivity. And if you don't get productivity out of an economy, out of people, you're in trouble. What happens overall is that the dollar will become weaker, right? People will realize that economies that are based on the dollar are becoming less productive than other economies. Now, in the short term, that's not going to happen because in the short term, everybody's rushing to the dollar. They seem to be the safe haven, right? We've been, the dollar has been the store of value, has been the world's reserve currency for years. And so they're rushing to that. And even the small countries are rushing to that. They have no other choice. They can't print their own money. They can't create, you know, create uh, economic prosperity out of nothing. And so they put their money into the dollar. Now that's going on in the short term, but in the long term, that's very bad for the dollar because the dollar is going to track productivity. And as long as we 
uh, continue to not be productive right now, <laughs> you're going to see a, a whittling away of the doctor or dollar, even a crash coming in the dollar, I think is coming fairly soon. I don't know when. Uh, people have been talking about a crash happening for years, but I do think now with the acceleration of, of the irresponsibility of centralized planning, it's happening right before our, our eyes and, and inflation is just the uh, canary in the coal mine. You might have seen that there is a, uh, a supply chain issue out there, right? The world is having trouble moving supply around. Lots of reasons for it. One of them is that there's just not a lot of people that are willing to take to do the next mile supply, right? So after the boats unload, which they're having trouble finding labor to unload the boats, after the boats unload, then they need to truck it somewhere or train it somewhere. And there's not a lot of uh, capacity for that. And so, uh, the, you know, people aren't working, people aren't trucking, you know, there, there's a, there's a, there needs to be more, more transportation capacity. And it's just not happening. And so what does that do? Well, it makes you have to pay the people that are willing to work more, which adds to the price of the unloading of the cargo, which adds to the price of the cargo. And all that is inflationary. Add in this last factor, and that is that oil is approaching all-time highs again. What does that mean? Well, when you got to pay the trucker more money to truck your goods across the country, okay, that's inflationary. And then you got to pay more fuel costs to truck that, those goods across the country. And on top of it, something I haven't even talked about in a while, and that's you're going to tax everybody a lot more. So if a trucker makes more money, you're just going to get taxed more. So they're going to be like, well, you know what? I don't need to work the extra hours. The government's just getting 60% of my money. So you're seeing oil prices contribute to this inflationary cycle. And one thing leads to the next. And so now there's inflation. And so now you have to pay the workers more to be at the stores, if you can find workers at the stores. And then when you pay the workers more to be at the stores, they're going to charge more. And then the people are going to be like, well, I, I got to pay more. So they're going to be demanding more money at work if they go to work. And so it's an inflationary spiral, and we don't see that it's happening yet. This is going to lead, potentially, a lot of people say it's not going to happen, to hyperinflation. All right, taking all of those issues and boiling it down into uh, why Bitcoin's going higher. Normally, there was gold. Gold and silver is what people flock to when there were these kinds of times. It's not happening in this cycle. What's happening in this cycle right now is people are moving to Bitcoin and the on-chain data analysis says that people aren't selling it. People are buying it, but they're not selling it. So there's a lack of supply, which is leading to an increase in price. And when you put all those things together, that's why you're getting a huge increase in cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin. But when Bitcoin leads, all the other altcoins are going to follow. Watch other videos that I have. You want to hear about all the other altcoins that I'm looking at. But this is a, an exciting time to be in the market. There's a reason that Bitcoin's at its all-time high. If you don't understand it, if you think it's crazy, you can't put your hands on it. You know what? You can't put your hands on the zeros that the Fed is putting behind your dollars either. It just so happens they print this green thing and you think you can go spend it. But how many of you are using cash every day anymore? Most of you aren't. And if you move everything over to, to credit cards, pretty soon the government's going to have its own digital currency and they're going to print those fake digital currencies as well. And that's going to be another cycle and another boom and bust. So get involved in the cryptocurrency space. It's an exciting time. And in five years, I guarantee that you're going to regret that you didn't. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, I have some options for you. Uh, I'll put them in the link below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. By the way, if you want to learn more, if you want to join some of my ecosystems, we have books and courses and masterminds and mentorships and all kinds of really cool things to get the probabilities in your favor. You know, I help wealthy investors play offense and defense by creating safe, reliable income. But it all comes from a system, guys. It all comes from a system. And if you want to learn to do anything right, you've got to have a system. It can't just be I watched a YouTube video and now I'm going to go throw my good hard earned money. You need to learn a system. And I've been doing this for 44 years, and I think I've got some really cool programs for you to learn. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. You might as well learn it right. You might as well put the time and effort into something that's going to make you money for the rest of your life. Go to one of my sites. The main one is called hackingmoney.com. You can click there. You can go to the products tab. You can see what we have to offer for you so you can take your trading to the next level. And maybe I'll even see you at one of my events. In any case, I hope you join one of my ecosystems, and I hope we see each other down the road.